Good evening and thanks for joining us. One of the most colorful and popular premiers in Canadian history has died. Ralph Klein's family and close friends were by his bedside when he passed away today in Calgary. He was 70 years old. Klein had been battling dementia and lung problems. He survived by five children and his wife Colleen who issued a brief statement. She says the nature of his illness made it very difficult to express his thoughts these past years, but Ralph very much knew and appreciated the well wishes and warm messages he received. Reaction to Klein's death is pouring in and we'll have more on that in a moment. But we begin tonight with a look at the man who became King Ralph. Our Francis Silvaggio reports. This was one of the last times Ralph Klein was seen in public. Chocolate or vanilla? Mm. <laughs> Barely able to speak, the shell of his former self quietly attended the dedication of a Calgary park named in his honour in June of 2011. This was a high school dropout uh, who became Premier of the province and, and governed for a very long time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a dream to me. I didn't think it would happen. The former television reporter's political career began in surprising fashion, virtually coming out of nowhere to win Calgary's race for mayor in 1980. And when I'm betting a horse, I always look at a good, strong back runner. He was a blue-collar mayor who shared drinks at his favorite bar and said what was on his mind. He famously blamed Calgary's soaring crime rate on eastern creeps and bums. The comment raised eyebrows, but also his popularity. Shortly after bringing the Olympics to Calgary in 1988, the three-term mayor resigned and joined the provincial Tories. As environment minister, Klein publicly gave the middle finger to environmental protesters. And two years later, his party gave him the thumbs up as their leader. He was seen as a man of the people and that he could get away with that because, you know, uh, he was one of us. Within the first two years as Premier, Klein slashed spending by nearly a billion dollars, reducing hospital beds and forcing widespread layoffs. The cuts caused anger across the province. The day that uh, we've been working toward for... But when Klein announced a balanced budget two years earlier than expected, voters seemed willing to forgive. Welcome to uh, Ralph's world. <laughs> Klein led the Tories to four straight majority governments, including one after he vowed to stop drinking, after he threw money at a homeless man and told him to get a job. I admit that I uh, drink too much. Eventually, support within his own party began to wane, forcing the charismatic leader to step aside in 2006. Obviously, uh, I was uh, very disappointed. The Ralph Klein Center. Illness plagued Klein's post-political life. Years of drinking and smoking developed into emphysema, and a rare form of dementia silenced the man known as much for what he said as what he did. When named to the Order of Canada in 2012, he was too sick to even stage a photo op. His wife Colleen accepted the honour on his behalf. He always felt his reward was public service. He appreciated the medals he got because of the sentiments behind the people who gave them. But you know, Ralph, it wasn't about the medals, it was about the people. It's not policy, it's personality. I mean, you couldn't have invented a character like Ralph. And our Francis Silvaggio joins us now from Calgary with more on this. Francis, reaction has been coming in from across the country. What are you hearing? Well, when you have a personality as big as Ralph Klein, you make a big impression. And condolences are now streaming in from across the country from high-profile figures, including Alberta's current premier, Alison Redford, who said Ralph Klein's ability to connect with Albertans from all walks of life was absolutely remarkable. Prime Minister Stephen Harper added, to me, he wasn't King Ralph, as some described him. Instead, during a colorful political career, he remained Citizen Ralph, a man who said what he believed and did what he said. And of course, one of his legacies will be the fact that he was considered a premier of the people, able to connect with the everyday citizen. And those citizens will get a chance to say goodbye as condolence books will start rolling out very shortly to provincial buildings and offices across the province. And planning is also now underway for some sort of public memorial. Sophie? And I'm sure those condolence books will fill up very fast. Francis, thank you.